or or I could be in a hallway near it, and it could be laundry. I do also like how that's at like the top floor of this uh, of this building. Yeah. Katie, murder the cat. Hello, and welcome back to Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad Show. Watch terrible movies. Tell you, you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo, joined as always by the other host, Mr. Kyle Hinton. Kyle, it's 143rd episode. Yes. Starting the new year off right with a classic. With a classic. Uh, this has been requested probably a handful of times over the years because this is considered a classic of good, bad media. And Kyle, I'm here to drop the hot takes. Oh, oh no. This movie's just good. <laughs> I'm not even fucking kidding. This movie is just good. There's no no particular reason why it's just good, is it? I mean, it's it's such an original concept and story and and really has themes that are original to itself and definitely haven't been rehashed over the years. No, but not, not every story has to be original, Kyle, and this sure. one is pretty fine. It's pretty okay. I will clarify, this is not an incredible film, but it is a much better film than I was expecting in every way. Like, it's just pretty okay. I have notes, we'll get into it, and I, by the end, everybody will agree that this is an overlooked classic of modern comic book cinema. In this essay, I will... <laughs> oh, We're talking those... about barbed wire. Don't... So, Kyle, well, let's just get into it, because uh, I'll talk about why I like this movie as we go. Brian, did you know there was a point in the 90s where every comic book IP was basically being turned into a movie? Wait, in the 90s? In the 90s. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you say every, there was like five. <laughs> Spawn, Batman, I mean, Batman was throughout. Yeah. But like Spawn, Batman, there was the Super uh, Superman uh Nick Cage film never actually came to fruition. I mean, but it was yes. being produced in right. the 90s. Uh, Tank Girl, Blade, Blade. I mean, yep. depending on when, because that was late 90s, right? Like yeah, Blade was like 98 or something, or something like, that. like that. Yeah. Um, and so, then right before Spider Man, obviously. Uh, so why not just go with that same vein for a comic book that nobody's really heard of called Barbed Wire? Yeah, yeah. And you know what? <laughs> they fucking crush it. <laughs> this it, movie. It is. It it has a theme. It has a tone. And it nails it. And the story <laughs> fucking makes sense, which for me is was such a nice delight compared to some of the movies we've yeah, talked I, I about on say, here recently. They, they definitely go on the, uh, I wouldn't necessarily say simpler is better. Yeah. But like they, they went with everything is shallow enough to make sense, mm -hmm. but keeps it throughout. So it's it's just, it's It's, it's, it's solid, a very simple you know, story. It is, yeah. we got to get this person it can over or can help fight against the evil overlord government mm -hmm. organization. They need to get somewhere so that the evil government organization doesn't murder them. Let's get them there. The end, basically. <laughs> That's it. Il Ilsa's new man's fleeing Nazi Germany. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's also Casablanca. This movie is kind it's of hundred percent Mad Max Casablanca, which is kind of great. Mm. I kind of applaud them for doing that. Uh, this film also takes place in dystopian 2017. Yes, the opening line: "Steal our." Like we get our among my favorites, the opening exposition crawl. You gotta love that, uh, which is every comic book movie back then did this. But it's like the year 2017, Steel Harbor. It's the second American Civil War. And Steel Harbor, we find out, is the last free city. Mm -hmm. And I love, she has a line very early on where she says, it was 2017, the worst year of my life. The year was 2017, the worst year of my life. There was only one free city. And I was like, boy, do I have bad news about you for the next <laughs> four years. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, it's not getting any better, lady. <laughs> oh, shit, that cracked me up, though. 2017, yeah. <laughs> Um, so the the congr uh, congressionals, is that what they're called? Con yeah, the congressional. The old democracy is overthrown by a tyrannical new group called the Congressional Directorate. Well, they con they call them congressionals Anyways, like all the time, but they're like the congressional it's just government. Like in place of, of big evil government. Yeah, they're ju they're the giant evil fascist like Nazi. I mean, they're like, literally literally Nazis. they're wearing like Hugo Boss yes. <laughs> uniforms. They're literally just Nazis. Um uh, without we don't actually see any of their ideology, I'm, I'm just gonna, but they're I'm, dressed I'm, like I'm Nazis. I'm going to love to see the YouTube algorithm just Yeah, we're way too early here. in the episode to talk about that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, we're not getting we're not getting money for this one, so. Nope. Um 
But yeah, I, I mean, it's very clear with it. But again, so uh, but the, the they're the they're the you know supreme overlord evil government, and then uh, we have an, a, a group of freedom fighters. But then we also have Steel Harbor, which is the last free city, which is basically just the L.A. port. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's where everything takes place. Yeah, yeah. but I don't I don't know where it's supposed to be or what necessarily. Um, I also uh, the only thing I was really unclear on is why. They call it the free city, mm-hmm. but the government also seems to have jurisdiction there because they, they have, show they, up. They also have a police state. Yeah, so I just didn't understand the, na- the I didn't understand the exact details. Maybe somebody who's read Barbed Wire, <laughs> the comic books, can explain yeah, it a little bit would, better. It, but other than that, I was fine. But I was like, I, it's a free city, but also the government shows up and seems to have power here. So it seems like I, whatever. Um, but Barbed Wire, her name is Barb. Wire, yes. <laughs> which is maybe the worst part of this movie is the names because she's Bob Barb Wire and one mm. of our other protagonists who we'll meet later, played by Tamara Tamara Morrison, yes. uh, Boba Fett himself, uh, is which I don't know if you planned this, but good tie-in with Book of Boba Fett. I coming know, out. Right? <laughs> that was the whole that was the whole idea. Also, he's also a good, better, bad, bad alum. Speed two. Joe, issue handheld radios to all the crew. Yes, sir. Hey, please, somebody find the captain. Yes, that's true. He is in Speed 2. Uh, but his name's like Axel Rod. <laughs> or something like that. That's such a porn name. <laughs> it's, I mean, her name's... But yeah, and everybody's names are ridiculous. Other, I mean, some people know, but like our main character's names are ridiculous. It's the dumbest part of the movie. Um, but <laughs> her name is Barb Wire, and she runs a... Uh, a club, like mm-hmm. a, a big club, nightclub yep. in in Steel Harbor City. But then uh, at, at night, she moonlights as like a bounty hunter. Yeah, basically. a mercenary for hire. Yeah, but primarily we see her like claiming bounties. She mm. takes them to the, the, you know, like the bail bonds office. Bounty hunting is an ugly, unpredictable business. Barb, you of all people should know that. Um, And I will say this movie delivers on the goods right away. It's the opening credits is just Pamela Anderson being hosed down yep. <laughs> for like 20 minutes. Yep. I can't show too much because you there's cannot. a lot of a uh, lot we of get, uh, areola we get a few nipples popping here up and there. there. And there's there's surprisingly few areolas in, in considering how much of her breast is exposed and we're yes. still on the butt. There's very tactfully placed uh, pieces of cloth and whatnot, but uh, it, we, we do get the the goods, and I was like, you know what movie? You know we're coming here. You know what the yep. audience of this yep. film is here for? Let's not mess around. <laughs> Fair enough. And also, the website we watched this on, uh, because it was an upload of a you know a a rel- relatively middle. It wasn't a terrible quality no, upload. No, it was, um, I think it was like seven twenty, which but. This opening scene where she's being sprayed down with water, oh, it's yeah, pitch black. Yeah. The f- compression yeah, has made Yeah, because it's, it's nothing but like spritz and stuff like that. So over the, black. It's, it's ridiculous. You can't see. Yeah. It's just all it's like eight pixels on the screen. You can't see anything. It's fucking amazing. Um, but then one of the patrons in her club starts catcalling her. <laughs> well, no, this incredible. wasn't her club. This was, oh, was this not? This, a, was, this was a club she was undercover oh, at. Oh, that's so right, she that's right. Yes. Get the, uh, her, the, the, the package out. Right, right. I forgot about that. Yeah. So she's undercover at a, at a at like a strip club or whatever. Um, and this patron starts cat calling her, and she takes her heel off and throws it into his forehead. Gone. Come on, babe. <laughs> I thought she killed him. I was like, that is... And nobody seems to react to her murdering a patron for catcalling her. I mean, catcalling, bad. Mm -hmm. Also, it is a strip show, so... It seems like... uh, I was like, you know what? It could just be like cabaret. I don't know what it was supposed to be. He was being a jerk, but I thought she murdered him and nobody batted an eye. He's actually alive. Like, when we see him being drug out, he's like, oh... It just still has the shoe embedded into his head. Yes. It's kind of an incredible opening, um, but you know this establishes from moment one because mm-hmm. she didn't snap until he called her, her babe. babe. And don't mm-hmm. call her babe, and I assume that's a, a, a like a thing from the comic books. Is one more person calls me babe. As well, sad. The only thing going through my mind is that'll do, pig. That'll do. Pig. <laughs> Different movie, um, but uh, also uh, inspired because uh, uh, George Miller. Mad Max, mm-hmm. George Miller to Babe. We can get there. You can get to Babe from this movie Ooh. without going too far. Nailed it. <laughs> say, uh, it's like six degrees of Kevin Bacon just nightly, nightly yeah. like, put together. Six degrees of actual bacon. Babe, the pig. <laughs> <laughs> Ka-chow. 
<laughs> um, anyways, there's that should be. I'm sure there's a website. It's six degrees of actual bacon. And it's how, in relation to who, oh, who to Babe the Pig. That'd be that'd, be, that'd be good. Yeah. <laughs> that'd be fun. Um, so there's a. Uh, she has a fun gadget cigarette. It starts with James Cromwell, who's been everywhere. <laughs> oh yes, that's true. Uh, but so she gets, she's in the back, and she gets approached by the club owner or something mm-hmm. like that, and she sleep darts him in the forehead with a, a cigarette. I love yes. it. I love it. I, don't, I was like, what? Okay, cool. I don't smoke. <laughs> <gasps> Um, because we will find out that this is like a post-apocalyptic ish mm-hmm. setting. Like it's not completely post-apocalyptic. It's not like fully Mad Max, but it's somewhere on the road to Mad Max. I also can't tell, like, cause like they're clearly in like a kitchen, right? Like, yeah. Like they're, yeah. Or like the hallways the, near a kitchen the or person whatever. Yeah. Who's being held captive is even in like a deep freeze. Yeah. Or yeah. She's in, cause there's like meat hanging from there. Yeah. But they, 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 she frees her and tries to get her out and they go down like there's a, a it's a young church. girl just to clarify. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's, she's trying to rescue uh, this like a sex daughter. trafficking victim or whatever. Yeah. Um, but they, she, she gets her out and then they go down a meat shoot or something. Was this a meat shoot? I don't what know. What was this? I hope it was a meat shoot. What? What? I don't know what a meat <laughs> shoot is, Kyle. <laughs> what, what? It's clearly some sort of shoot. Yeah. Uh, but what would be in a kitchen that you would need to hawk down a... Trash. I mean, yeah. That's the only thing I could think. Okay. Or or I could be in a hallway near it and it could be laundry. I do also like how that's at like the top floor of this, uh, of this building. Yeah. Katie, murder the cat! <laughs> So yeah, yeah, they go out some sort of, like you said, probably a laundry shoot or something. And anyways, mm. th- then they get to a window. They're kind of trapped, but she's like, you ever seen Batman? I will say oh, grappling hook. They, they break it in such a way that I was legitimately like, was that real glass? Because that been. broke and not a safe way. Didn't feel like pla- uh, like no. glass or sugar. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah. They, they, they grapple they, hook away. You ever, see, you ever seen Batman? Like, really? <laughs> Thanks. What are you doing? Ever seen Batman? No, I can't. There are, I will say, that is also the, this movie's worst part, but it's also what kind of makes it fun. Is the one-liners and stuff are pretty bad. Like yeah. the di- like. Some, oh yeah. Some of the dialogue is fine. Like the moment-to-moment, just conversational dialogue, I think is okay. But yeah, like the action movie one-liners and stuff are d- very cheesy and bad. Also, the amount of leather that they have to like grease Pamela Anderson in and out of in this movie. Like these these outfits are uh, clingy. Let's just say. Yes, I mean it's the late '90s or mid '90s. Was this like '95? Yeah, so it's the mid '90s, yeah. uh, and we're also doing post-apocalypse. So yeah, there's lots of leather, Kyle. Lots <laughs> lots of leather. But so she t- she escapes with the girl, goes to take her to her parents. The parents are sh- being shitty about giving her the money or something. Mm. I don't know. Um, so she ends up taking their car, which is fun, and drives away. The car plus the cash, not a bad night's work. And then we we cut to uh, introduce our evil villain, who is, and I don't even know his name. He's just a Nazi guy. He's like a he seems yeah. to be like a general of yeah, some sort. Some I don't know military. Yeah, but he's torturing this woman to get information from her, and her the the device <laughs> they are using to torture her is. It, there's no way that didn't come, <laughs> Kyle. There's a zero percent chance that that wasn't secondhand. From a Star Trek TNG porn. Oh, absolutely. That was it, Borg it, porn. It was Borg porn, yes. It was Borg porn, and then they put it in this movie. A hundred fucking percent. That's mm. all it is. Oh, My man. favorite part, like the face part looks fine. The is, part is, on is, her is, boobs is, looks ridiculous. It's the it's the chastity belt like <laughs> fucking Borg thought, thing that, that they have. The boob thing was the most ridiculous part because like it's you, also like, what are, you, are you milking her? Like what is what is Well, this? they're they're electrocuting her nipples, Kyle, I think. Who fucking knows? <laughs> It's so ridiculous, but it. I do love the 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 fucking bottom. It's like a bikini bottom <laughs> yes. in the shape, but it's like it's like gadgets and electrodes. And it's, it's so fucking so stupid. insane. But he's torturing her to get information, um, and she won't talk. And then he they end up getting it somehow, and then like electrocuting her yeah. and killing her. <laughs> And then uh, we find out during this that they're trying to track down a doctor named Carla D or Cora D. Cora D. I think Cora that's Dellinger or something like that. She's like a resistance. And of course, she has just recently defected. Yeah. yeah, she has recently re- defected to the resistance who's trying to fight against the Nazis. La resistance. Yeah. And um, but she has and this is all explained in the scene and then reiterated again later. 
some for some reason in her blood she has her blood is an antidote to this super powered um biological weapon they have created mm -hmm. and so they want to get her back so that that people the resistance can't use her blood to create a cure for this disease or whatever. her dna holds the antidote to our greatest biochemical weapon she must be captured alive at any cost are we, are we sure this wasn't like half the plot to deus ex <laughs> yeah it's also half the i feel like this this is the movie that neil breen wishes he could yes. write so, <laughs> and make this is like neil breen's favorite movie it's got to be one of them i control access to anything and everything even from my little simple brilliant setup and the only thing it's missing is uh <laughs> what's that guy's name the fucking asshole with the the karate oh <laughs> <laughs> what is his name uh, Why am I Steven blanking Seagal? Steven Seagal? Okay. It's the only thing this movie is missing is Steven Seagal, and it would be Neil Breen's favorite movie. Mm -hmm. um, but anyways, uh, then we also see Tamara Morrison at this point mm. with this this woman, and we're to assume this is the doctor, and he's seeming, he's like escorting her to and get the, her the out. The second we hear his voice, we're like, uh, yeah. I mean, he's got a great voice. <laughs> it's Tamara Morrison. He's fantastic. I need her help, Charlie. I need her to put us in touch with local resistance. Um, and I think it's also one of the reasons that this movie works is that every scene he's in, he's great. Mm -hmm. So like, and I and I will contend that Pamela Anderson is fucking fine in this movie. She's pretty good, like ninety percent of the time. What what he reminds me of in this is Benjamin Bratt in Catwoman, where he's fine in every scene he's in, mm. but can't quite save. I disagree. The I don't think he needs to film? save anything. That That's movie's like fucking terrible. <laughs> this movie, he doesn't need to save anything because it's it, it, good. It's save for basketball sexy. <laughs> uh, oh, we're oh. also introduced to the fact that Barbed Wire has a blind brother, and I don't. Charlie, I believe, is his name. Mm -hmm. um, and he hangs out at her bar or her club all the time. Um, and anyways, but there's so there's a massive shootout. Uh, but uh, Tamara Morrison and the and the they're they're attacked by the Nazis, but they get away. Um, and uh, they also then they're, they're like running and they get into a fight with some people and it turns out they can like the doctor can kind of fight. There's like a sweet fight where tomorrow Morrison's like snapping everybody's neck and shit. Yeah. He like snaps the dude's neck at the end. Lots of neck snapping in this movie and the next one. Mm. Oh, God. Ah, sweet dreams. The next movie, a guy gets his head like 360 snapped. Ooh. That was a wild scene. Anyways. <laughs> um, also, I, I have to make a, a note that in my notes... I stopped. I didn't want to write Tamura Morrison every time, and I didn't know his character's name, so I just put TM. And every time I did that, it auto corrected to the trademark symbol. Nice. So in my notes, nice. whenever it says Tamara Morrison, it just says trademark. I, um, I just kept saying Boba Fett. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So um, the Fett man. <laughs> so she, uh, meanwhile, Barb Wire is now working uh, on the street, taking yes. a client. It's all this, a, it's all a ploy to get yes. into a place or something. I, it's like it was, she she's she tracked down a guy whose room was next to the one she needed to get to. Yes, and then and then yeah, seduces him, jeweled him, could jewel him. Into, Does that work? Is that word word work for this? I maybe I don't know, okay. but she basically just stands there, and he he very sweatily is like, yes, I would like, and I say very sweatily. <laughs> As a man who so, sweats a lot, this motherfucker is sweaty. How, how, how much is this going to cost me? <laughs> yeah. How much is this going to cost me? That depends on how you want to play. Well, I like to play rough. Oh, God. Uh, so she takes him to this room, and she ends up knocking him out, and then she puts explosives on the wall with, and blows a hole in, like, a mattress? I yes. don't know why the mattress... Well, the mattress is there to, like... Uh, Oh, stop the explosion the, from, from her hitting side. her. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense, I guess. Also, it, it makes create it creates cool like you get feathers yeah, falling. It in looks the pretty shit. good. <laughs> yeah, um, but she busts in and 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 she's able to get this guy. I don't even know why she wants this guy. I don't remember his eyes. Is he the guy with yeah, the eyes? He's the okay. With the eyes. Uh, and his name is Mr. Krebs or something mm -hmm. like that. And I love then the bad guys show up after she like yeah. hand, handcuffs them, and they're the worst shots in the fucking world. Yes. Kyle, <laughs> she's laying on the floor six feet from them, and the guys like bang, 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 and not and she's even close. Rolling out of the way. <laughs> not, not even the, fucking. The dude close. with the two pistols. Those pistols are freaking huge. Yes. Like they, I'm surprised he's not breaking his. Hers wrist is thing. too. I think yeah. she has like a deagle. Like everybody has everybody, like fifty every, cal handguns yes. or whatever. Everybody has insane wrist pain by the end of this. <laughs> yeah. 
Oh, God. There is a pretty cool shot where she's behind the table and she does like a superhero oh. pose with her gun. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Also, that table is sturdy. Very sturdy. <laughs> it's like, you know, an inch of hardwood and it's blocking like, all the bullets. Like, <laughs> it, it, it does a better job than this table. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, but so this first action sequence in this hotel room, while not amazing, is pretty good. And th this movie's fairly competently put together compared to some of the movies we talk about. Like the a the sound is mixing mm. is pretty good. Um, the action scene is cut together pretty well. They got most of the coverage they needed. That's not the case for everything. We'll talk about that later a little bit. But um, overall, I was like, ah, you know, this is not bad. This is not bad. <laughs> Oh God. And then, so she ends up beating up everybody. And then a guy with a knife like that she didn't kill stands up and is like, you really, really, you really know your way around whatever, babe. Yeah. And so she just turns around and the guy with the knife, she pulls a gun on him and he doesn't try to do anything. Like nope. what was his plan? <laughs> He's like, I'm going to stab you from 20 feet away. She blows him away yeah. and he gets hung like he gets yeah hung by the neck oh, out the something. window or something. maybe the blinds or okay something. I, don't, I don't know it's pretty or great tie that's a very good tie <laughs> yeah yep yes 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 silk good weight ratio <laughs> the guy just cuts to the it cuts to the the detective and it's the guy from uh it's it's the uh the salesman from uh the fuck was that movie called um the three dogateers oh. and it's like that's greatest sweet. tie I've ever <laughs> seen. <laughs> who's got jelly donut match? Got jelly donuts. Who's got jelly donut match? Got jelly donut. Uh, so then uh, she gets crabs and she takes them on her bike and she shows up at the bail bonds office and who should walk out? But Clint, Clint Howard. Fucking Howard. <laughs> Gotta love a movie with Clint Howard. Incredible. <laughs> um, and so she's like dropping them off and they have to wheel and deal and he tries to shortchange her but then she's like screw you nope. everybody wants canadian money <laughs> yes apparently canadian money is worth the most in this post-apocalyptic future which i thought was funny canadian oh, miss wire <laughs> um and then uh, i i was I, the movie missed a shot here or missed an opportunity here she he's he's on the back of her bike and she's like all right he's all yours and she gets ready to leave and i was like oh god wheelie out and dump him off by wheeling that would be so cool be she good. just drives away yeah, and he falls off. off why wouldn't you have her wheelie Darn and it. dump him come on that would have been hilarious it's a pleasure doing business with you barb if it was a pleasure schmidt i'd charge you more also, so then she goes back to her office, and the the this is where we're introduced to police chief or whatever mm. guy, um, which I recognized from mustache, stuff, dude. and I could not know, I could not figure out what I recognized him from, but I knew him from something. Um, but like this looks pretty good. This shot, this this scene in here in this office with the way the lights are coming through the window gave me real strong mm. like Blade Runner vibes. Yes, like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, it doesn't look as good as Blade Runner. I'm not saying this is like Blade Runner. I'm just saying like it has some moments where like oh this looks pretty good. Well, like, you know, feeding off those those 1940 films techniques yes yeah it's very much leaning in at times into some noir style kind of visual storytelling but yeah expecting some distinguished visitors tomorrow a congressional delegation out of washington including first director at colonel victor prizer um so then uh he's talking to her and he's basically trying to figure out if she knows where krebs is i think yes. and he's she's like i, I do like know. how she's getting changed in this moment yes. and then she just instantly appears in that that leather get up yes. and it's like okay hang on hang on a second <coughs> it's know, future leather well, Kyle. it took like four people to get her into that it's future leather it's just like magically yeah <laughs> I, I love it we, you could hear if she was like behind, it would be hilarious if she was behind one of those uh changing wall things you know and he's standing there talking to her and you just hear her like fuck god fuck her. like you know like stretch trying to like stretch leather over she's like fuck son of a bitch fuck can you hear me that baby powder fuck <laughs> it's like oh. <laughs> i've been saving my lunch money i didn't know you were open for lunch a little gun running here some bail jumping there because <laughs> yeah it would be impossible to get into some of the outfits by herself and mm. feel it feels like well, like even like uh the first x-men movie they said they had to be like stitched in yeah <laughs> yeah yeah it's fantastic um but at the end as he's leaving he's like see you later miss kapetsky and i love again the movie failing at very simple writing things here 
She replies to that by saying, Miss Kapetsky died in the war. I'm barbed wire. Just cut the I'm barbed wire part. Yeah. The first part of yeah, that line is fine. fine. I, I Miss Kapetsky died in the war. We, we know, know you're we barbed know wire. You, yes. You're the person who's on the cover of the movie that yes. we're watching. Ah, that was so infuriating. Boom, boom, boom. Miss Kapetsky died in the war. Um, and yeah, that's the kind of thing where it's like, oh, how? I'm saying the exact same thing. Yeah, it's such a simple fix. Just don't say I'm bar. Oh, whatever. Um, it's not even that, like you need to. It's not even that you need to go back and reshoot that. Just no, cut it early. Just you could record two takes of it too. You could mm -hmm. have one where she says I'm barbed wire. Do that for the stupid studio person who gave you that note yeah. or whatever, and then exactly. and then don't I just fucking don't feel use like it. Like I know who this is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, um, but I do love this And this felt like a comic book thing for sure um, She has a pet dog And her mm. name's uh, what is it? Oh it's like with a C or something They only say it a couple times yeah. um, But uh, Clementine maybe I think it might be Clementine nah, Something like something that anyway. Camille Package check <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, but this 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 fucking clown shows up at like four, or, you know, at like nine in the morning. Yeah. It's like I want fucking I drink. I want to get drunk. And she's and the dog comes down and, and just bites his nuts, but doesn't bite it. It like grabs his junk in its mouth and holds mm -hmm. it, and then directs him out the door, Jesus. which is kind of fucking hilarious. Yes. And that felt like something from a comic book to me. A hundred percent felt. I was like that. Probably. It's like a scene right out of a comic book for sure. I'm gonna have fun finding these panels. Well, you don't have to find them. It's fine. Uh, it's fine. Um, oh, God, I love it. But then the congressional show up. Uh, these are the Nazis. Um, yeah, they flood in with authority. Yeah, is, is they're shaking it down this time because they come back twice. They come back later mm -hmm. when Tamara Merson's actually there. And this is the first time, I think. Um, and the, anyways, so they show up. Um, and I love there's this... <laughs> <laughs> this great line about how uh, he's telling them, like, if Cora D, this is what he says, the main general says to one of his other Nazi guys, he says, if Cora D escapes, I will personally rip your heart out of your ass and stuff it back down your throat. throat yes. <laughs> he's got some good ones. He's yeah. got some good lines. Yeah, he's too. got some good ones. I will personally rip your heart out of your ass. And stuff it back down your throat. Um, but we also find out in the scene that people can completely change their appearance, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Like, we don't ever see it happen to anybody, but we see uh, Cora D is not what she looked like when she was working for the yeah. the the government or whatever. She's now changed her appearance slightly. But you can't change your eyes. They need the minority report the uh, yes. surgeon guy. Yes. But uh, and that becomes a plot because that's which, how they tell who people are is by scanning. By eyes. the way, at the end at the end of the if it, like if. It, it's it's there's a point at the end of the movie where like the, the eyes look so unnatural even if they were on somebody who had blue oh, eyes. When she puts the contact yeah. in at the end to go through the scanner, it, it's it, like it, electric it, blue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was like okay, this looks kind of you look, you like look an half alien. robotic. Now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would definitely raise some questions of like why are your eyes like pulsating blue electricity? What is going <laughs> on? Uh. What's wrong with your face? Good luck. I will say the other thing that's really annoying in this movie is that almost every scene, and I, I say every scene, there's at least two or three times in very early on where a character, after interacting with barbed wire, has to comment about her boobs, and it happens like yes. every scene. You're talking about that she has big assets. Yeah, there's that one where the detective's like, yeah, she's got great assets. Very interesting woman with most impressive assets. And then there's one before, I think, when they're dropping off, when she's dropping off Krebs at the um, bail bonds office. I think Clint Howard says something like, you look very inflated today. He says something weird about yeah. it. You're looking rather buoyant this evening. Shut up. And it's just like... Every fucking scene has to, of we course, get have it. a... We get it! We get it! We don't have to tell us. We can fucking see, movie. We You're saw, making we it saw very the obvious. intro to this film. Yes. <laughs> oh, God. Um... We know why we came here. <laughs> yes. Uh, but so we also find out and we get some backstory about how Barb Wire used to be part of the, the uh, resistance. That resistance, yes. Uh, uh, but she, she dropped out after a, a suffering a terrible defeat. Is, it, is this the, uh, the flashback? Rumor has it that you used to fight with the resistance. You shouldn't believe everything you hear. 
I'm neutral. Yeah, I, I, it happens. I don't know if the flashback, but yes, that's about the flashback. Okay. That's the whole point. It doesn't matter. Um, she she explains. We we find out initially that there's something happened, and then we do eventually get a flashback where um, it's pretty they're hilarious. yeah, and it reminded me of the of the beginning of like Firefly in the one of the first episodes where we see the flashback to Malcolm Reynolds like losing with the rebels or whatever. Mm. It looked that same kind of like um, kind of low budget, quick like we knocked this out with uh, with. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fucking military surplus costumes that didn't really fit everybody yep. and it's kind of yep. like, oh, let's get it done, all right. <laughs> Where's Axel? He's not here, he's not coming! He said he's sorry, but you gotta get out of here! But she was part of the resistance and they lost a battle and part of the reason they lost, it seems, was that Tamura Murison's character didn't show up to help. They don't go into any detail about what he was supposed mm. to be doing, but he didn't show up, and so, and that was involved in them losing this battle, and after that battle, she was like, screw it, I'm out. I'm just gonna go run a sweet nightclub yep. and be a bounty hunter. <laughs> Uh, and he shows up at her club and she punches him in the fucking face. Immediately. <laughs> Classic, yeah. you know, and to be fair, so this movie is tropey as shit in terms of like, this it's like oh you know the old war buddy who left you know who you haven't spoken to in a decade and now you're out of the game shows up to get you back in the game and the first thing she does is punch him in the face that scene happens in a million movies i don't care mm. they fucking do it and it's great mm. i love it <laughs> I'm, in, I'm on board <laughs> um but we also find out that Charlie is interested and in, he's actually maybe kind of subtly been helping the resistance this whole time mm. because when Tamara Morrison leaves and and barbed wire won't help him Charlie's like I can help you. I know some people. And he directs him to Dude. Spike. Yes. Spike. Uh, and, the, and the Resistance headquarters. Or I am actually really surprised with the Spike character. So she she has like a voice changer. Yeah, and, and, a, and, and a, a crazy scar. scar yeah. I'm surprised they didn't, since they had the scar there, they didn't go with one like on the throat or like around the throat. Yeah, that so that... Ex give her a reason. A reason for... I actually thought, and again, this is another thing where I thought the world building was pretty cool. Like, she feels like an interesting character. Mm -hmm. She's only in, like, one scene, but she's unique. <laughs> she's got a thing, and I was I like... I wish this she served more... She probably does in the comic. Yeah, she probably has a lot more time in the comic. In this movie, she's in this one scene and then shows up dead later, and it's yeah. like, okay. But I was like, this is an interesting character... Okay, and this is like, where I could tell the the this movie had world building to pull from in yeah, the comics and was doing an okay job we, at we it. We get all this talk of the resistance, the resistance. We yeah. meet the resistance, and they don't really do much. Yeah, they really don't, which is a little disappointing. Um, they kind of just show up at the end a little bit. Um, but at this point, I'm like, I kind of just like this movie, Kyle. I kind of <laughs> like it. Tamara Merson is just amazing in everything that he's in, and the world building is kind of working. I'm into this. He was the best part of Speed 2. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, that aside from that, and uh, Willem Dafoe going completely insane. True. Uh, then the Nazis roll into the bail bonds, uh, Clint Howard's bail bonds, looking for Clint Howard and murder everybody there. Uh, but Clint Howard's not there, so they're out of luck on that. Um and then we get the flashback, as we talked about, about the whole thing with Tamara Merson and his backstory and everything, whatever. Um, but then Clint Howard shows up to, at Barbed Wire's club and is like, hey, they're all trying to kill me. I And I got these contacts. I want to sell them to you. And then I'm getting out the hell out of Dodge or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'm not exactly sure what his whole plan is because he ends up just leaving yeah. the contacts. Yeah. And, but he does say I'm a dead man with or without the contacts. So I, I don't know. But he's got these contacts that basically will let you pass a, any, the, any the retinal scan. Check. You put these in your eyes, you get through any retinal scanner, congressional or UN. Which yeah. they need, which specifically um, they need for the, the doctor, doctor needs because her eyes still get scanned <clears throat> and she won't be able to get out. Um, but he's like, she's like, I don't want them. But then he just leaves them there. And I mm. wasn't sure why he left them there if they're like his only like thing of value that he has to you know what i mean like he does say like they're gonna kill me with or without these but like i feel like having them gives you at least some leverage there's there's i don't there's, know and then there's so many issues with like where he hides them and then who finds them well charlie finds them and i guess it's because he's got super hearing or he's not as blind as he says he is i don't I know because he's so. blind we see him clint howard hides them under a, like a a, a a thing in the kitchen or whatever mm. and the camera pans up and charlie's sitting there but he's very far away, and as we've established, he's seemingly Insanely blind, blind, completely yeah. blind. He has no like retinas or anything. Um, and but so I guess the idea is he heard it and knew something was going on and went to investigate. I, I, guess, I guess. I guess. I guess. He does end up with them later, so somehow he figured it out. Um, 
But then also, I thought this was a cool scene. They, and again, it's kind of silly, but I thought it worked within this world that they've started building. They go to the, the morgue or whatever the Nazis do, and they have one of the guys from the bail bonds in this giant aquarium full of ice or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then they electrocute <laughs> yes. the shit out of him and read his memory. They, <laughs> like they, they like, like his, extract his last, like, his yeah. last, like, uh, things he saw. 10 minutes or whatever, yeah. yeah. Cognitive impressions, usually those closest to death first, and then what's left? Memories, dreams. Like, oh, it's like um, Wild Wild West. Yeah, <laughs> yes, yes. Except less stupid, honestly. This one is way less stupid than the Wild Wild West one. It feels more realistic mm. because, I, I, not that it feels realistic, but like, it because it's so violent and weird <laughs> that they just electrocute this dead body that's sitting in an ice aquarium. I thought it was amazing. I'm dying. <laughs> Um, but then we cut from the dead body in the ice aquarium to uh, a very living uh, Pamela Anderson's body taken an extravagant oh bath, <laughs> a very in, extravagant in, in bath a, a, in the second floor of this of this like uh, of her, her nightclub club or whatever. Yeah, in a see through tub. <laughs> Fantastic! I love I love this movie. It's so <laughs> ridiculous and amazing. I love it. Um, and then. <laughs> <laughs> Tamara Morrison shows up and she gets out of the tub and the whole reason this happens is just so that she can stand up and be naked but be covered in Bubbles, suds yeah. so you can't really see anything but it, the horrifying part and this confused again as usual Katie was not paying attention she was sitting on a couch like watching TV mm -hmm. or whatever um, but she saw this moment and because she gets out of the tub and then she didn't see that part but then she's standing in front of a mirror talking to Tamara Merson and she's like wrapped in a towel or whatever but she has suds all over her still because she didn't rinse off when she got out of the tub so that we could get the shot of her with suds all over her naked body and Katie was like what's wrong with her skin and I was like what and she goes well, like it's all like white and pe and I was like oh those are bubbles she was in a tub she's like why didn't she rinse off and I was like because it's barbed wire, right? Because the point of the thing is that we needed to see her fucking boobs covered in soap, Katie. She was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, God. Um, and then her and Tamara Morrison just start making out because yep. they had a fling, apparently, in the past. Uh, they're just like, oh, they're they're over it. Like, they're over their, their tumultuous past and him not showing up. Uh, but then they get back downstairs in the elevator and Cora D's waiting there, the doctor. Who, who I think is married to... To him, yeah. yeah well, and we find, and that was confusing at first because she's just like, "Am I interrupting?" And they're making yeah, out. It's like, and then Tamara the Morrison's like, "This is my wife," and I'm like, "No, they got an oh, open relationship. Okay. Right on, good for them." But uh, Bob, this is my wife, Cora D. How impressive. No, that's not what it is. What it is is that they're married. He says, "This is my wife," but like they married for cover. Like, mm -hmm. although I think it sounds like they actually are together now. It's hard to explain. Maybe because the mean, way he leaves with her at the yeah. end seems to in imply that maybe he is. I don't. I know. was kind of. We'll, we'll get to it at the end because yeah. it's just like full cheese. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so then again, we explain that they created an HIV derivative that kills people in 12 hours and that her blood is the cure. And so they got to get her out so that the resistance can use her blood to make. Cora has the vaccine to red ribbon in her system and the congressionals want it back. We have to get her to Canada to tell the truth commission. There's a cure to the congressionals deadly epidemic. Uh, now it's the last of us. <laughs> like now, <laughs> yeah. kind of, um, uh, and they need those contact lenses uh, in order to smuggle her out so that she can pass retina scanners. Um, and then at this moment, the Nazis show up to the club downstairs. And I love they start break, break in and they, they they start accosting Charlie <laughs> and the detectives yeah. with them. Yeah, they're, <laughs> and they, they're trying to scan him. <laughs> the detective's like, he doesn't have any retinas, you clowns, or whatever. Mm. Like, Are you morons? And I was like, oh, that's a great line. He doesn't have any retinas, you morons. Um, and then b the fucking, uh, barbed wire's brilliant plan here is I'm going to go down now. You come down a few minutes later. I'll tell him I was just sleeping with you two. That's normal. Who are they? I picked them up off the boulevard. I like a good menage every now and then. And, and they're like, and then they'll just let you leave. And I'm like, you really think they're not going to scan the two other people that yeah. was with they were gonna scan Charlie. Yeah, and I was like, why did you think they would just let him leave? Also, Whatever. I was kind of hoping at one point, and this would be like kind of clever, is knowing that Charlie doesn't have retinas and they wouldn't scan him, that they'd hide the contacts in his eyes. Oh yeah, could have worked. Could have worked. Meanwhile, I, no. Meanwhile, we went. We went elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Um. But so the, and I was like, and the other thing that was annoying, it's like, well, you you you're like this super badass spy 
club owner who like has a closet full of a million guns you don't mm. have a back way out of this club yeah. you don't have like a secret escape route nope. no okay nope. they just gotta walk through the okay whatever um but so they go to scan her but charlie hacks like, he has like some sort of device that interrupts it i don't know yeah he somehow and now again i was like whatever sure fine uh but it, it messes up the device so they can't scan her eyes and she's able to get away um and they're like I, and i love that when this doesn't work they're just like all right, I guess that's yep, fine. Get yeah, out of here. It's broken. Okay. Sir, the scanner's broken, sir. Idiot. You're wasting my time. Get out. <laughs> cool. Nope. Right to, don't even scan the other guy. I guess his not he's not in the system anywhere or anything, but sure. Mm. Um, well, yeah, I mean, like, it, I'm surprised it didn't cause an issue at the end. Like, he should be a known resistance fighter. Yeah, you would think. It's, yeah, a, a little strange. Uh, but then they destroy everything in the bar. Classic bar shake up or shakedown. Yep. Just like flipping. We get the same shot of them tipping over alcohol shelves like four times. It's like, let's just <laughs> flip it around backwards and use it again. All right. Um, and, and I love this whole time. And we haven't even talked about this character, her like secondhand man who helps her run yes. the nightclub. <laughs> I love this guy. But his reaction during the scene, he's like, sitting there watching and he's holding like papers or something and he's like oh! <laughs> this is a reaction to them like Ugh. flipping over their tables and stuff i don't know it's so funny um yeah i mean that that's his like bread like yes. that's his whole thing and she eventually the gives him the bar yeah. later uh yeah oh thanks for giving me this yeah destroyed place. bar <laughs> like there's zero assets left in this place they ruined everything the bar is yours Get out. I'm getting it to you. Me and Charlie were history. Um, but he gives her, anyways. Uh, but they, she leaves now and she's gonna help um, them, or she's pretending at least that she's gonna help them make a deal and she takes mm -hmm. them to uh, Big Fatso. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which this, when this guy comes this, out, this I love is this. the most comic book thing yes! in this film. It's, it's great. so mad, Max. He, they fucking in the introduction <laughs> to this character they walk up into a junkyard to meet this guy he gets wheeled out in the fucking scoop of a bulldozer yes. just lounging yes. it's incredible oh god it's incredible they, they, they bring him down peace offering what do they bring him as a peace offering food donuts yes he's a very hungry man kyle he enjoys himself he's eating a goddamn turkey leg the whole yeah. time yeah yeah he's, yeah it's it's fucking amazing i love his voice too they did a little subtle like they they slightly tweaked his voice to make it a little bit lower so he mm. sounds kind of, oh, I love it I love this character as in Nancy? oh now don't give me that surprise look yeah. um uh and then so it's uh, he, they're they're he's going to give them basically they barter with him to get them safe passage to mm -hmm. the the plane or whatever that's going to take them out of the city and 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 to the resistance you know base or whatever um and uh, so they, that's all set up for the next day or whatever. Meanwhile, uh, Charlie goes to look for Spike and the Resistance for some reason. I don't even know why, honestly. Yeah. But he goes to look for them, and when he gets there, everybody's he dead. dead. Yeah, and the reveal is is great just because he's he's you know blind. He's blind, and so we see all the bodies yes. as he walks in, but he doesn't know. And they lower yeah. Spike's body down on a winch. Yeah. <laughs> It's pretty great. It's pretty great. Again, I kind of love this movie. Um, but uh, Charlie then is captured. Yep. And the and thing that this is the weakest part of the movie to me, because he's an interesting character. Yeah. The dynamic of him and his sister and him being blind and like his past, I wanted to know because he was also part of the resistance. And I think that's how he like he got a grenade or something. Is what yeah. blind. Anyways, he's an interesting character and he just dies yeah they, like so unceremoniously getting tortured he won't give them information they're just like all right well fuck you fuck you fried <laughs> and then i'm like oh, oh that and i assume and then it's so confusing because he looks like he he like uh, and i'm like oh shit they killed him well that's dumb that's boring because now like whatever because <laughs> that seems like the scene you would do at least in front of barb mm -hmm. like to really like kick the you know like he, he would like kill him in front of barb to like really turn her up to 11 or whatever but no yeah she, especially if they like they they effectively knew that he and and barb are associated yeah pretty closely yeah they're at the same bar they could have used him as bait yeah yeah, I, that's what I would thought was going to happen. But no, they just murder him, like, kind of off screen. And then Barb is like, oh, no. Uh, like, basically, she's ready, getting ready to leave. She's like, me and Charlie are, I'm giving you the club. She says that to the, the club, the, the other guy. And me and Charlie are getting out of here. And he goes, oh, Charlie. And she's like, where's Charlie supposed to be here? He told me I had to go and see an old friend of his, uh, someone named Spike. 
Spike? Where is Charlie? And he's like, he went to see Spike. And she's like, Spike! And I don't know why she knows it's a trap. That's a little bit messy, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but she gets there and, re and everybody's dead. And she just finds Charlie. They, like, lower yeah. him, like... <laughs> Crucified, he, he, on, crucified a, on, on the crucified on on the on the chain link. Yeah, and again, I still couldn't tell. I was like, "Wait, is he supposed to be alive still?" Because he, she's like Charlie, and it sounds to me like she was like, "Oh my god, I can save him!" But then he gets down, and no, he's actually nope. dead. And I was like, "So he is just dead. This is stupid. This is yep. real dumb." Um, but Charlie is dead, and now this is like the thing that you know gets her into the fight she's like i'm fucking i'm taking yeah. it i'm taking all these assholes and down from here on is also where it gets kind of stupid <laughs> and incredible how dare you yes. uh, also i want to mention the director of this film we didn't talk about and it totally makes sense now and it'll make even more sense for this big action sequence at the end here in a second um is he was the main thing he did is like a million music videos which mm -hmm. makes sense but also he was the second unit director on batman forever which makes total sense for this movie yes and especially for the we'll talk about it here in a second um but it is i will actually i'd argue that this movie honestly almost looks better than batman forever because it's more restrained if you it's would, less if, wacky honestly if you would have told me that this was the, the director of Waterworld before kevin <laughs> costner took over true that would have made more sense. that would have made sense too um but yeah it's it's more restrained than like batman for forever and it doesn't look as ridiculous i i don't know i kind of like i said i like this movie <laughs> but so they all get captured they go they're 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 all going to leave to get the smuggle everybody yeah, out so they're and fatso, fatso double cross them mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's like haha I, now i get the money from the nazis and from you so fuck you that son of a bitch um, and as the detective is is arresting them. is arresting them. This, this is where I'm I like, love what, this. What, what, hang on, nah. did they plan this? Yeah, well, it didn't plan it, but you could. I like this because this detective the whole time you could tell he wasn't into. He's not. He doesn't like the the government guys. No. He's not a fan of them, and the whole time he's been like. You know, they, they've been coming in, causing ruckus in his town and being assholes. And he's like, look, and he, he doesn't like them. And it's been slowly building. And this is the point where it clicks over. And he's like, fuck you guys. I'm helping the people that I should be helping. Yeah. Which is the resistance he people. Sli he slips Barb a grenade. When yeah. He's supposed to be handcuffing her. Yeah. <laughs> she just holds it up like she turns, she goes brick from Anchorman. She's like, I have a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> just walking around with yeah, it. She's walking around with a grenade. Um, and she's holding a grenade in the air and then she throws it up in the air and everybody goes, fucking gunfire goes everywhere. And it lands, it lands on Fatso in his lap and fucking blows The fucking him look up. on his face is um, incredible. Oh! <laughs> it's amazing. And then the fucking, uh, the, the scoop of the, of the bulldozer and just explodes. Oh God, I love it. And then so now it's, it, it pops off. They get into um, this armored van, armored van, and and they're driving away. And then she's with all of them. And then she's she as she's getting. And I gotta mention this as she's getting ready to go hop. There's a motorcycle in the back because mm -hmm. she rides the motorcycle everywhere. Um, and as she's getting ready to go get on her motorcycle, she tells them that her, as they're driving. In an emergency, pull that yellow lever. How come I don't get to drive? And it's just a yellow lever on the dashboard. And she gets out on her motorcycle. She's driving around. She's got fucking rocket launchers on her motorcycle. Of course. It's incredible. She shoots two cars and they blow up and flip all over the place. Um, and then... I love, she's like I said, she said, if, if you have an emergency, use the yellow handle. They're driving down the road, and there's like a blockade. Yeah, it's a complete blockade. And they're like, is this an emergency? Seems like to me. It <laughs> fires more rockets. <laughs> Shoots fucking missiles out of the front and blows up this, uh, this blockade. And I love, it's like, I feel like she should have been a little more specific yes. as to what kind of emergency. Because I was like, what if they're like, and again, the context, obviously. But I'm just imagining a scenario where she says that. And then, like, they come across a, a school bus full of kids <laughs> trapped on, like, train tracks. <laughs> and a train is barreling down on them. And they're like, this is an emergency. And then the school bus just explodes. And they're like, what well, the fuck? How did that solve anything? Well, we killed them before the train did. So, we, you know, it's a problem killing. solved. It's problem solved. <laughs> oh, my God. Does this constitute an emergency? Yes. Well, now they're 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 uh, van Chaos is flipped fights. over. Yes, and they're trying to leave. Barb is trying to buy them time. She's shooting everybody. She shoots a guy. And he falls like four stories yes, off a building. It's pretty great, it's awesome. Um, 
then uh, Mr. TM, <laughs> Mr. Boba Fett himself. Is, yeah. He's like, um, I'm going to go back. And immediately gets spotted by like, what, 10 people? Yes. Yeah, and then starts fighting everybody. Yeah, and he gets into a big fight with the main guy. He starts climbing a building. Meanwhile, she's oh, no, they're climbing a, 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 a crane. A, a, sorry, yeah, a crane. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, she's fighting. Also, I have to talk about my favorite. One of my favorite things is how stupid all the Nazis who aren't in like the dress uniforms look. Mm-hmm. They have like they look like a Brazil they, character. No, they, right? they, they look like uh, the um, the Rocketeer. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have these like rubber caps and these goggles. They look amazing. They're so stupid. Mm-hmm. I love it. Um, and then. So she's driving around on her bike and she's looking for the, our main bad guy, whatever his name is. And he just comes crashing through a wall on a forklift and impales her motorcycle and pins her leg so she can't get off of it. Mm. And then I love the scene. He's just driving in circles, it's laughing it's maniacally. Great. It's so good. And we're cutting from that to Tamara Merson beating the. And this fight on top of the crane looks it's pretty, pretty good. fucking good, and right? The, the yeah. thing is, con- my, my, my uh, favorite. Okay, so they're decking it out. And my favorite part is. You would think that this crane's out of control. Yeah. It's not. It's not. There's a guy driving it. <laughs> yes. Tamara Merson gets and down there. And it's constantly spinning. Yeah. But Tamara Merson gets down into the into the uh, cockpit. Oh, yeah. Well, he, he beats the dude at yeah, the top. Yeah, he beats the guy on top. He, like... He backflips hits, off the... Yes, bit. he, like, hits him so hard, he backflips off the crane in it's this amazing. glorious It's shot. incredible. Well, anyways, he gets down to the controls, and he's like, hey, which one of these levers makes the, the crane go down? Oh, yeah. this one. And uh, which one makes it go side to side? Who's this like, one. Oh. And uh, what's this one? Oh, Bam! Just, elbows him. Oh, knocks him out. It's so good. And now he's, he's fucking operating the crane. And I love this. So she's caught on the forklift on her motorcycle, and... <laughs> Tamara Merson swings down the, the hook crane and, grabs and grabs the forklift. <laughs> what? It's incredible. I don't know whose idea this was, but they are fucking brilliant. And it picks it up and is swinging this thing around like 200 mm. feet in the air as they're climbing. Yeah, I'm around. not gonna lie. This looks pretty practical. Yes, it looks like, great. Obviously stunt doubles, but like, yes. damn, that looks dangerous. It looks amazing. <laughs> and this is another thing that made sense for the second unit director from Batman Forever because I don't remember. If you, I don't know if you've seen that movie in a while, but the opening action sequence of that movie is two-face i think ripping a bank safe out of a like a tower Mm -hmm. and it hanging from a helicopter swinging around and batman's like fighting people on it (laughs) so it's a big thing hanging in midair swinging around i was like "Ah, okay so this guy knows how to shoot that so he's like let's do that for our big action sequence here um, so there's a great fight scene. She's able to get out, and they're kind of, you know, going back and forth, beating each other up. Worst part of the movie, though, is he she has now climbed away from him. He's, like, mm-hmm. laying on the hood of the car. There's also a car on it at this point. Like, they also yes. inhale the car or something. He's, like, laying on the hood of this car, and he yells up at her. Who's She's, like, 10 feet yeah. away from him at this point, and he says, This is just like my favorite song. I got you, man. Reminds me of my favorite song. I got, I got you, you, babe. And she's like, "Don't call me babe." And then the car fall. I don't. Does she, she do something? Oh, she pulls a pin and, and drops it. Drops the it. Thing, yeah. yeah. Don't call me babe. <gasps> but it's so stupid because why does he say that line? Then he doesn't even remotely have. Like, there's so many moments where he did have her. Like. When he first impaled her with the truck would have been a good Although, line. To, like the explosion and everything when he falls is yes, incredible. Yes, it re- yes, it's incredible. He falls, uh, you see, you get a, a slight dummy shot of his body on the thing as it falls and it hits, <clears throat> everything fucking explodes. It's amazing. It's incredible. Um, uh, and then, uh, so they're able to escape. We kind of just cut and they're getting to, and now we're going to have our Casablanca ending. Like, we're at the air, the tarmac. Casablanca. <laughs> yes. gr- so much so they're even <laughs> speaking French because it's going to, it's going to Quebec. <laughs> yes. And, uh, so they're, uh, they're getting on the plane and it is like an old plane. Like it's mm-hmm. like an old, like, you know, prop plane or whatever. Um, but they got to get through security. And as barbed wire shows up just in time and she's, she, <laughs> She's like here, and she pulls contacts out of her eyes. Yes, she had the contacts the whole time, the even whole though it time. did not like her eyes yeah. were not electric blue. <laughs> blue like no, no. Uh, although she was mostly wearing a motorcycle helmet, but still. Um, and she ends up giving, and I was like, "This is the grossest thing I've ever seen." Yeah, no, that's what I was thinking. I was like, "Ooh, exchanging eye fluids." She pulls them directly out of her eyes and hands them to the lady, and she and I was like, "All right, desperate okay, times." We, do we have contact solutions or anything? Desperate times call for desperate measures, but that's fucking disgusting. Yes, <laughs> horrifying. 
Uh, yeah, and then we get our Casablanca ending. And then my favorite thing is, so they, uh, Tamara Morrison and, and the doctor get on the plane, fly away, and we save the day. And then we we get barbed wire walking across the tarmac with an Uzi. I don't know why she had, yeah. she didn't have that. Re- I don't know. She has an Uzi or whatever. Also, now. They, wouldn't she be past a security checkpoint at this point? Is there a security checkpoint? It's the f- crazy feature. Well, there is. Well, who, whatever. doesn't matter. She's okay. on the tarmac, and, and the detective is like, I think I'm falling think, in love. <laughs> and she turns around, hits a pose, and says, get in line. <laughs> I believe I'm falling in love. Get in line. And then the camera goes and zooms in and out oh like a thousand. Oh god! <laughs> and then it, it ends gloriously. It's such a stupid ending, and I love it. I fucking love it, Kyle. I think this movie's good, bad, but only because it's good. <laughs> But also bad. Uh, it is frustrating. Ugh. I actually think this movie is quite entertaining and mm. and way more competently produced than it has any right to be. And I thought it was a lot of fun and actually worked pretty well as just a movie. <laughs> it, it is ridiculous and there is wacky shit and there is some bad stuff. Like mm-hmm. some of the writing's not great, so whatever. But overall, as a movie, it worked for me pretty well. And so in that regard, plus a stack on top of that, just how ridiculous and wacky of yeah. a time capsule I, I it think is. The, the wackiest stuff is stuff that maybe looks good in a comic book setting, but just looks freaking weird yes. in a movie setting. I think that is part of it too. And then it's just, I also though just appreciate that the movie didn't shy away from any of that. It leans into the ridiculous, like it's it's the most mid nineties ridiculous sex comic book movie ever. And I love <laughs> yes. it. I, it's so stupid and amazing. Um, so yeah, I would say good, bad. Mm, yes. Kyle, as always, people can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GB or BB and support us there for a little bit of money. It'd be super great, super helpful. Um, also, you can get some merch if you head over to tpublic.com and search. Yeah, you're not wearing yeah. me either. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and search for uh, Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad. You can find our merch there. I have a podcast called This Film is Lit where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, our most recent episode, I believe, will have been The Godfather. We're doing the Godfather. Yep. <laughs> so there you go. You can look out for that. Look at the massacre, <laughs> my boy. Mm-hmm. That's a line from that movie. And then <laughs> uh, occasionally we stream on Twitch. You can look out for that on twitch.tv. The things are on the screen. Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, welcome to 2022. Uh, keep keep watching movies. Until next. <laughs> Until next. Whatever. I'm, low, I'm so lost. Just watch Barbed Wire. It's I'm hungry. hungry. Watch barbed wire. Bye.